Win Day, which means let's go. Jumbo friends, my name is Christy and I will be your safari guide here on the Harambe Wildlife Reserve for the next two whole weeks. So I hope you're ready for a two-week safari. If you didn't sign up for the two-week safari, don't you worry, I will upgrade you for free right now, since you're all on the truck anyway. Alrighty, if you look above you, there is that animal spotting guide. I spent all night coloring all those animals in, so just look at it. I stayed inside all the lines too. There's about 40 animals in five of those things. It took a while. All night. But there's about 40 animals, so we have a pretty good chance that we might see some of those animals here. And the animals surprisingly like the rain too, so to get a good show. Alrighty, if you have your cameras or any other loose objects such as hats, sunglasses, I don't know why you would need your sunglasses right now, but anything like that, make sure you hang on tight to those because we cannot stop on the reserve for any dropped objects. So just make sure you are holding on tight to those. Also, can you please keep your hands and feet and arms, everything, every body part inside of the truck? Because it is very prickly out here. Some of those bushes have some thorns on them and we just don't want to touch those. Also, remain seated too. Please remain seated because it is pretty rough terrain out here. And we don't want anyone getting hurt or falling out the truck. <laughs> that would be bad. And I don't want that to happen. Alrighty, in your cameras, a sports or an action setting is usually best for those cameras because sometimes we cannot stop for all of the animals. And sometimes the animals don't stop for us. So an action or a sports setting is usually best. As soon as we get the all clear though, we will be heading on in right after this truck to start our safari. Is this anyone's first safari? Raise your hands. Alright, so there's a lot of people. Alright, we got our Brandon. Brandon's a newbie. That's cool. Even if you're not Brandon and a newbie, don't you worry because no two safaris are the same. You never know what you might find roaming around here on the reserve. Alrighty, looks like we are the next truck. We just gotta wait for the warden to tell us to head on in. So what kind of animals does everyone want to see today? Lions, tigers, there's actually no tigers in Africa, they're in Asia. Crocodile, there are some crocodiles. Warthogs. Hippos, everything, are you just naming everything on that animal spot again? All right, so let me tell me one animal that you think I wouldn't know or that you actually don't know that you want to see up there. Hyena? I don't know if the hyenas are out right now. It's not too dark, so we don't know if they're out. How about an okapi? That's my favorite. I like when I ask that question and people tell me the most random animal, and I'm like, oh yeah, we might see that. <laughs> Alrighty, so we are starting our safari journey back in the forest. In the forest, it's best to look behind trees and bushes because the animals do like to be hidden. On the right up there, there is an okapi. Actually, two okapis. So those two okapis, many people think they are related to zebras because of those striped legs. But their closest relative is actually a giraffe. Their face structure, tongues, and how they walk is all very similar. And on our left up here, there are two greater kudus. So the greater kudus, these two are female because they don't have horns on their heads. The male greater kudus have the horns, the females do not. They're just a type of antelope. And the greater kudu. Looks like they are staying in that shade over there to hide from the rain. It looks like there is a black rhino up ahead though, all the way up there on the left. And over here on our right, in one second as soon as we make this turn, there is a saddlebelt stork. So that's a saddlebelt stork, it's a bird. The saddlebelt stork actually has a wingspan about nine feet wide, very wide wingspan. Let's see where that black rhino went. He went up here somewhere. Did I miss him? Him or her? I don't really know if it's him or her. There it is. It's going to be back behind us to the left up there. That's a black rhino again. Black rhinos weigh about 3,000 pounds each. Very large. They, it's also sad because there is only about 5,000 of them left in the world today because of humans. Humans are poaching those black rhinos for their horns. If you look very closely, all the way up on the left, you see a copper-colored animal. That's a bongo. 
There's a couple of them back there. All the way back there. Bongos are known as the ghosts of the forest because if you could tell, they don't really like to be seen. They do like to be hidden back there. Alrighty, but it looks like we are now headed down to the river. In the river, you can usually find animals such as different types of birds, hippos, and those crocodiles. Hippos love the water, so the best place to usually look for hippos is in the water. Oh, and there's one up ahead, too. There's actually two, so we're going to keep on headed forward to get a closer look of those hippos. <laughs> Alrighty, so those hippos there. Hippos are one of Africa's most dangerous animals. This is because they are very territorial and very fast animals. But there's some on your left here too, if you can't see those ones. There's some on your left in the water there. Hippos can stay underwater for about eight minutes at one time without coming up for any air. Well, and these birds here on the center island, these are called pinkback pelicans. Pinkback pelicans get their name because during the mating season, the colors on their back change to pink to attract the other gender. It's a very original name, the pinkback pelican. Alright, let's go find some crocodile. He probably should be around here somewhere. Alrighty, and I do see some up ahead. They're going to be on your left-hand side here. Whoa. Those are Nile Crocodile, and yes, they are real. So please remain seated on this bridge. That would be really bad. These are Nile Crocodile. Their jaws are so strong that it could break the bone of their prey in one bite. Sometimes the Nile Crocodile, they sleep with their mouths open. When they sleep with their mouths open, they look really silly, first of all. But they do this to act because it cools down their whole body. So they use that to cool down their body when they are sleeping with their mouths open. We're going to keep on headed for That bridge did not sound too safe, so we're just going to keep on driving past it. All right, looks like we are headed towards the savannah now. We can tell we are headed in the right direction because of the break in the tree lines up ahead. The savannah is a lot more open, which is good for some of its taller animals to roam around in, such as giraffes and elephants, two of my favorite animals. The savannah is also home to animals such as zebras, lions, ostriches, and many other animals. You never know what you might find roaming around on the savannah. Alrighty, this funny looking tree on your right is called a baobab tree. So the baobab tree kind of looks upside down because the branches on top look like roots a little bit. This is just how the baobab trees grow here in the savannah. They also go leafless for about nine months. Again, that's called a baobab tree. Alrighty, up ahead of us to the right in that little area over there, there are some Ancoli cattle. If we keep on going around, we might get a better view of them. It looks like they are hiding under those trees back there. Alrighty. So to the right there, those are Ancoli cattle. Their horns are very large. They grow about three to four feet long on their heads. Very large horns. The inside of those horns is kind of like a honeycomb shape. So their horns aren't that heavy. They're actually quite light. Do they get hunted for their horns too? Um, I believe so. As an African truck, it's a rare species. <laughs> Alrighty, so on our left here, under that little rock cove thing, there are actually African wild dogs. They're African wild dogs. Many people think they're hyenas, but they're not. They actually look nothing like hyenas once you see them up close. Those are African wild dogs. They're also known as painted dogs because of the color. Please not whistle at the dogs. They're not your type. Are they cuddly? Alright. So those are the African wild dogs. I still hear you whistling back there. Please do not whistle at them. 
Alrighty, so all around the savanna there are termite mounds. Termite mounds are made up of three things, which include dirt, saliva, and dung from the termites. Probably the worst three things that something could be made out of. Dirt, saliva, and dung. But they're as hard as cement, so elements love to roll up against termite mounds with their tusks. This one here on the left is really tall. It's about 25 feet tall. It's taller than the truck. It took months and months for the termites to build that one up to be that tall, and it continues to grow. Those gray animals are wildebeest. And then the sand colored ones above those are the Patterson elands. Patterson elands are the largest type of antelope. They grow about six foot tall. So where your arms are in the truck, they come to about there at full height and full growth. Again, those are the Patterson elands. Those gray ones are the wildebeest. Wildebeest are the largest herding mammals other than humans. They love to live in their large herds and they travel in their large herds. Giraffe. Alrighty, and on our left coming up, there are some giraffes. Giraffes are the tallest animals in the world. They grow about 18 to 25 feet tall. Yep, there's a little baby. Baby giraffes can actually walk within an hour of being born. It's pretty incredible. The giraffes on this reserve are called Maasai giraffes. Maasai giraffes have an irregular pattern of their patches on their fur. A group of giraffes is called a tower. And when the tower moves, it's called a journey. Does anyone know what color giraffe's tongues are? Purple. purple. Yep, it's a really deep purple, almost black. So I'll give that one to you guys. <laughs> Alrighty, we're gonna get a good look of those wildebeest there and those Patterson elands to your right. So those wildebeest are actually white bearded wildebeest. That's the name of them. They have little white beards. I think they're more gray, but they're called the white bearded wildebeest. Alright, next we're headed to Monkey Point. Monkey Point gets the name because monkeys usually like to hang out here, but I do see something quite larger hanging out here too. It's an elephant. Looks like it's playing in the water. Elephants love water, surprisingly enough. They drink a lot of it too. Alright, let me see know if you see any monkeys here on our left. They do like to hide in the trees over here. Alrighty, but there is that elephant to your right. It's actually a male elephant. We know it's a male elephant because male elephants are solitary animals. Yeah. Yeah, but it looked like there was a monkey all the way back by that rock back there. All the way back there. That's actually a mandrel. And mandrels are the largest type of monkeys. So on that elephant's back, there's dirt and sand. Elephants throw dirt and sand on their backs to act as a natural sunblock. So their skin is very sensitive to the sun. Even though it's not that sunny right now, like it still hurt their skin. So they throw the dirt and the sand on their backs to help protect it. So just like we need sunblock, so do the elephants. Or is it just a little more natural than ours is? <laughs> All right, we should, it looks like we might be headed towards more elephants. Looks like a lot of open area. Is that sign? What did, what did that sign say? Was that real close? Yes. Oh. Well, just don't tell anyone we're going this way today. <laughs> we're gonna make our own little safari trip here. Just don't tell anyone there. I don't want to get fired. Oh, yep. We're not supposed to go over this bridge. It's fine though. It's fine. We're just gonna smell. And again, don't tell anyone. 
Oh yeah, it doesn't sound too safe. It's fine. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. Yeah, we're not telling anyone about that because that is not safe. Did I lose anyone? Raise your hands if I lost anyone. Oh, we're leaving you back there. I'm sorry. Your family could pick you up later. The park closes at seven. Just make sure you're back by then. All right. Looks like we are headed through clay pits now. And elephants love to eat the clay from the clay pits because of the nutritional benefits that the clay gives the elephants. There's even some tusk marks all around us. So hopefully those elephants are still nearby. So this is how the elephants are being poached for their tusks. Elephants' tusks are made out of ivory, so the poachers are selling their ivory tusks on the black market. But because of different conservation funds and reserves like this one, we can help save some of those elephants. Looks like there are some to the left up there, so we're going to keep on heading that way. Looks like we picked up a radio signal out here also. Oh, no. Alrighty, there are some elephants there to your left. I'll buy those baobab trees. That one might be headed down to the watering hole, so we're gonna head that way next. Because again, elephants love water. They actually drink about 40 gallons of it a day. It's a lot of water. They can also hold water in their trunks too, for a period of time. It looks like that one might be getting in the water too, so let's keep on heading down there. Again, the elephants love the rain. They play in the rain all the time. Yep. That one. Oh, there's the babies. It looks like that baby is in the water and the mom is watching it. 